Sin must be dealt with. S-I-N. That's a real word and it's a real effect. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. My name is Rod Him. I'm Janice. This is Quick Study Television, a television program designed to take you through the Bible in one year. We're very excited about that. Somebody to help us do that is Ryan. Ryan, what's up? Well, today I'm looking at an ancient artifact which was said to be used by the Vikings. All right, the, an artifact used by the Vikings. That's very interesting. Mm -hmm. we'll look forward to that. Now, you studied today. Yes, what did you do? we're going to talk about hold fast your confession. All right, hold fast your confession. Very good. And today also, sin must be dealt with. We're going to deal with this. Animals' blood in you know sacrifices given by the Hebrews did not permanently cover the act of sin, but something did. Now, the question is, what is that? We'll talk about that. Get your Bible guide out and let's study with your Bible right now. Separated by so much time, it is easy for us today to overlook the hardships suffered by the first generation of Christian teachers. In many cases, it was through that very suffering that the New Testament of the Bible was written and preserved for us today. A famous example of these persecutions come to us through the Apostle Paul, who wrote quite a few of his New Testament letters while imprisoned for teaching about Jesus Christ. The Apostle Paul continued his work even while he was imprisoned for his faith. Several of his New Testament letters were written from prison, while the specific time or place of imprisonment is not mentioned in the letters. The fact that Paul was writing from prison is mentioned, and there are several factors that can be added together to create a sort of loose timeline for the writing of the books. Philemon, Colossians, Ephesians, and Philippians have traditionally been seen as coming from Paul's Roman imprisonment, written about in the end chapters of Acts. Furthermore, Philemon, Colossians, and Ephesians appear to have all been written in the same period of time. Ephesians and Colossians are linked by the mention of Titius as their letter carrier. Colossians and Philemon are linked by Paul's list of five companions, the same in both letters. Furthermore, greetings are sent in both Philemon and Colossians to a certain Archippus, a member of Philemon's household, leading to the conclusion that Philemon was from Colossae. With Ephesus being the closest major city center to Colossae, it would have made a lot of sense for Paul to send these three letters by the same letter carrier, Titius. The book of Philippians is traditionally seen as also being written from Paul's Roman imprisonment described in Acts, due to the mention of the Praetorian Guard and of Caesar's household. Philippians is also dated after the writing of Philemon, Colossians, and Ephesians, due to the more somber tone adopted by Paul when referring to his incarceration. This tone may have been caused by the sheer amount of time that his case had gone without being dealt with by the authorities in Rome. The majority of Christian tradition informs us that Paul was eventually released from this first Roman imprisonment. The book of 2 Timothy then is attributed to a second Roman imprisonment of Paul during the persecution of Christians by Emperor Nero, the imprisonment that would eventually claim Paul's life.
Uh, you know, Germain asked for prayer for the ability to focus when reading the Bible and to have a closer relationship with the Lord. Focus when reading the Bible. Mm. Now think that through. Mm -hmm. That's important. I get it. That's a great prayer. I get it, Germaine. I, I, I can tell you about a time when I couldn't, I read the Bible, after all the years of my life and I read the Bible and I couldn't even think straight and I couldn't focus and I had to pray by the grace of God and thank you, Jesus, for him helping me exclusively, the church praying and everything happening. God healed me. And I, I need to tell you, Jermaine, that we're going to pray for you right now. Mm -hmm. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, in the name of the Lord, and I pray that by the power of your Holy Spirit, you would help Jermaine. And I pray, Lord, that, that you would touch this person. This is somebody who seeks a relationship with you, to know you and to understand you and to realize the power of that relationship. Because Lord, when we come to you, you bring down power and you, in, you empower us. And we need to understand that, Lord. We need to get it. So Lord, I pray today that we would all get this. And I pray that we would be able to focus as we read the word of God. And we're going to do it all next year. In the name of Jesus Christ and by the power of the Holy Spirit, amen. Sin is a darkness that drags our soul to the lowest level of destruction. Remember Romans chapter 6, verse 23. Here's what it says, quote, For the wages of sin is death, close quote. However, we must also remember the second part of that verse. Here it goes, quote, But the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord, close quote. No one can abolish this gift. God has done it all. And if we accept him, he will do a miracle in our life. No other God of any kind can do this. It is absolutely amazing to know our sins are forgiven and we live forever. Still, the Jews did not understand how it was possible for their sins to be forgiven. The writer of Hebrews explains what and how Jesus Christ did this in relation to their Jewish faith. And he explained how animal sacrifices were considered. Remember, no sacrifice other than a living sacrifice is of value to God. Sin must be dealt with. Hebrews 10, verses 1 through 10. For the law, having a shadow of the good things to come, and not the very image of the things, can never with these same sacrifices, which they offer continually year by year, make those who approach perfect. For then would they not have ceased to be offered? For the worshippers, once purified, would have had no more consciousness of sins, but in those sacrifices, there is a reminder of sins every year. For it is not possible that the blood of bulls and goats could take away sins. Therefore, when he came into the world, he said, Sacrifice and offering you did not desire, but a body you have prepared for me. In burnt offerings and sacrifices for sin, you had no pleasure. Then I said, Behold, I have come. In the volume of the book it is written of me, to do your will, O God. Previously saying, Sacrifice and offering, burnt offerings, and offerings for sin you did not desire, nor had pleasure in them, which are offered according to the law. Then he said, Behold, I have come to do your will, O God. He takes away the first, that he may establish the second. By that will we have been sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. Hebrews chapter 10, verses 1 through 10.
As Hebrews continues on, we listen to the small tweaks in the book and we understand some things. For example, one of the things is sin has to be dealt with. It's real. Sin, S-I-N, is real. Just like hell is real, heaven is real, things are real. These things in the Bible, they're real, beloved. We need to listen to the Word of God because the Word of God tells the truth. Now remember, if you have your Bible guide, turn to today's lesson as we get ready to study it because it is a good one. The Bible guide, the December Bible guide is here, of course, and it completes our year. We've done 11 others, and this is an amazing thing. But you know what? Next year, we're going to do the same thing. So if you're not on the mailing list, well, you need to write to us and give an offering in any amount, whatever God tells you, and, and get on the mailing list so you'll receive your Bible guide. Very, very important. You know, sin must be dealt with. That's the thing that we talk about as we continue on in this particular passage. And we think about this because the works of faith reminds us when we're born, we're not born perfect. We're born quite flawed, under sin. Now, God makes provision until the time when we can choose between good and evil, but still we must deal with sin. So we read Hebrews chapter 9 and 10. It's a great read today, looking at Hebrews chapter 10, verses 1 to 10, as we get ready and we're coming closer to the celebration of Christmas time. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus Christ, by the power of the Holy Spirit, you would help us to hear what you are saying today so we can understand it. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Now, the scripture is very important. Hebrews chapter 10, verses 1 to 4. For the law, having a shadow of good things, a, the law, the law has a shadow of good things to come, not the very image of the things, can never with these same sacrifices, which they offer continually year by year, make those who approach perfect it can't make you perfect. Verse 2, for then would they not have ceased to be offered? He asked a question. That's a really good question. For the worshipers, once purified, would have had no more consciousness of sin. But in those sacrifices, there is a reminder of sin every single year. For it is not possible that the blood of bulls and goats could take away sin. That's the law of God. You see, beloved, animals' blood and offerings were not to remove our sins, but they were to remind us. They were a reminder of, to us of the sins that have been committed. Now, this is what's amazing about Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ came as God's only begotten son, and he was born of a virgin Mary. It's amazing. And this is totally amazing because he lived for 33 years, and then we crucify him. What? We, we did what? Yeah, we crucified him. But you know what? He came back. He rose from the dead. And through that resurrection, he gave us eternal life. The cost of sin was finally paid for. Jesus Christ said from the cross when he was dying, it is finished. Finished. And we need to understand that Jesus Christ did this. Now, this is what the Hebrews are reading. And the author is trying to explain to them what Jesus Christ means everything. Very interesting. Well, let's go on in the scripture because it says, therefore, when he came into the world, he said, sacrifice and offering you did not desire, but a body you have prepared for me, capital M, in burnt offerings and sacrifices for sin, you had no pleasure. Then I said, behold, I have come in the volume of the book it is written of me, capital M, to do your will, O God. Jesus said that. Previously saying, sacrifices and offerings, burnt offerings and offerings for sin, you did not desire nor had pleasure in them, which are offered according to the law. Now, what is God saying? God anointed Jesus Christ. He anointed his only son as the final sacrifice for sin. Truth and power are in the offering God provided. Here again, we see it. God is the one who offered the offering for Adam and Eve's clothes. But now God makes another offering that is the final offering. And that's why Jesus said it is finished. Because that final offering 
took away sin. If we invite Jesus Christ into our life, he has the power to take away sin. He does a miracle in our life. Sin is gone and Satan cannot touch our spirit. There's no question about that because the gift of the Holy Spirit is, is beginning to germinate in our lives and the deposit of the Holy Spirit is there. Very important. All right, this gets really interesting because he's talking seriously now and he goes to Hebrews chapter 10. These last two verses are great. Then he said, behold, I have come to do your will, Jesus said, oh God. I've come to do your will, oh God. He takes away the first that he may establish the second. Very important. Look at this here. If you're Jewish, look at this. He takes away the first, God did, and he may establish that he may establish the second. By that will we have been sanctified. Sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once and for all. That's very important. Jesus Christ is man's salvation. There is no other. Jesus Christ is man's salvation, realizing there is nothing that we can do about our sinful state. We understand what Jesus Christ has done for us. We are forgiven men and women. And if you're somebody who has invited Jesus Christ into your life, you know what I'm talking about. Because you felt something unique, something that no person could do, but God himself, your creator, your designer. And you know, there might be people who think, well, Christianity is cultural, man. It's all in your culture. No, it's not. There are hundreds of cultures, thousands, that have Jesus Christ in them. And they believe that he comes into their heart and saves them. Let, let me tell you something. It's not cultural. It's across the cultures. Jesus Christ is for the whole world. God sent his only begotten son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Listen carefully. Jesus Christ comes and he says, come to me, all you who are heavy and you labor and I will give you rest. Come to Jesus today and say, Jesus, you know, I believe you're the Lord. You died for, on the cross for our sin and you rose again miraculously. And now I need you in my life. Be the Lord of my life today. Partakers in holiness. Now, what does that mean? What does the word holy mean? And what does it mean to partake in that? How does that work? We'll study that next time on Quick Study Television. Make sure you make time to join us because we'll be here. Hopefully you'll be there. Right now, here's Ryan. Well, according to evolutionary history, ancient man was much less evolved and therefore not as smart as we are today. But actual historical data contradicts this worldview. For example, it is well known that the ancient Vikings journeyed across the high seas to the United States of America. Now, this would require a fairly high level of knowledge and technology. So how did they do it? Well, it's interesting that Viking stories claim that one of the tools that they used was what has now been called the Viking Sunstone. Let's take a look. There is overwhelming evidence that the ancient peoples were masters of the high seas. For example, it is known that the Vikings navigated to America. Obviously, these people did not have satellite navigation systems in place to help them determine their position. 
yet major errors in plotting a course could have fatal consequences. Indeed, successful navigation requires accurately determining both latitude and longitude. As many have noted, longitude is notoriously difficult without accurate timepieces. However, as long as the sun was visible, latitude could be determined quite accurately. Yet what about the times when the sun was not visible, but was obscured behind the clouds for many days at a time? Indeed, the route from Scandinavia to America is very often covered with clouds. What sort of technology then did they possess which allowed them to determine latitude despite these overcast conditions? Research suggests that the Vikings could have used a large crystal of calcite to locate the sun's position indirectly. Calcite has long been called Iceland spar, that is, Icelandic silverberg or silver rock. But this research also suggests that this was also the fabled Viking Solarstein, or sunstone. The late Leif Carlson, an experienced sailor and navigator, did extensive research on Viking navigation and believed too that transparent calcite was indeed the Viking sunstone. Later, a research team was able to actually test Carlson's ideas and discovered that when light passes through transparent calcite, it refracts into two beams, resulting in a double image. As Philip Bell points out, Iceland spar is an optical calcite, the angle of whose sides leads to this double refraction of light. Unlike direct sunlight, reflected light is polarized, true of scattered light on a cloudy day. It is thought that the Vikings exploited these properties of light by mounting a calcite crystal in a wooden block and rotating it horizontally until the brightness of the two images equalized, at which point they could determine the sun's position accurately. Apparently this Viking sunstone could even be used at twilight when the sun was below the horizon to give them an accurate reference point. While it is true that no Iceland spar crystals have been found that are associated with Viking shipwrecks or settlements, the Viking sagas themselves do mention these prized sunstones as being used to navigate the treacherous Arctic seas. Additionally, it is believed that the Vikings made use of the stars as well as observed the motions of the waves and even the behavior of seabirds. Whatever tools and techniques they developed, they certainly were much more intelligent than often assumed by evolutionary historians. According to the Bible, humans were extremely intelligent from the moment they were created. And the global knowledge presented in the Table of Nations in Genesis chapter 11 suggests that it was soon after the global flood that Noah's descendants surveyed, mapped, and explored the entire post-flood Earth. So here we have yet another example of an artifact which contradicts the evolutionary worldview. Of course, the Viking sunstone only strengthens the case for the Bible, and the sunstone isn't the only example of the seaworthiness and intelligence of ancient man. We also have very detailed ancient maps and evidence that the ancients were brilliant shipmakers. More next week. You know, Ryan, it, it becomes fascinating to me because as you think this through, you have these things that people are finding that are, you know, pretty advanced technology for back then. And if they could, if you could bring them forward in time and they looked at us today, you would wonder what in the world do they think? That would be interesting. It would be. And how we project who they were today, they would see that and I think they would laugh. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I don't know. I mean, I'm just saying it'd be very, very interesting to discover that. It, it really would be, actually. Fortunately, yeah. uh, <laughs> You know, God doesn't permit time travel or doesn't seem to permit time travel. You can only go forward in time. Right? Only <laughs> so, and it seems to be fit, you know? Yeah. Time is time and God reveals himself in time and he knows the beginning from the end and he, he can see every detail in between. Mm -hmm. But uh, it, it's very, very interesting. And when we get to heaven, we'll find out because one of the things we don't often think about is we talk to Paul, I want to talk to Paul. But Paul was very different in culture and different in understanding than we were. So when you talk to Paul, what does that mean? Mm -hmm. uh, how do you communicate? Because you're gonna be able to do that in one language. And today we speak English, and of course they spoke Hebrew and Aramaic and everything else. So mm -hmm. very interesting stuff. It is. All right, what did you study today, Janice? Well, taking a look at Hebrews chapter 10, he calls this here, hold fast your confession, and we start with verse 19, and then I'm gonna pause at 23 to 25 and it says therefore brethren having boldness to enter the holiest by the blood of Jesus by a new and living way which he consecrated for us and we've been talking about that for the last few days through the veil that is his flesh and having a high priest over the house of God let us draw near 
with a true heart in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Of course, that's sprinkled with the blood of Jesus and our bodies washed because he is the living water. Let us hold fast. This is where I want to start to pause. Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering. For he, Jesus, who promised, is faithful. Verse 24. And let us consider one another in order to stir up love and good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as in the manner of some, but exhorting one another and so much the more as you see the day approaching. Okay, so we've got to consider one another. And this day and age, I think fear that a lot of times we just get caught up in a lot of the wrong things. We are not focused on the things of God. Our, our minds are not on, the, on, the, on heavenly things, but are on troubles and difficulties and complaints and crabbiness that we can get ourselves involved in. And, and I'm looking in the mirror as I'm saying all of this. There's a lot of things that we can get stirred up about, but instead of chopping at each other and sitting watching the news and being hard on different political leaders or things that are going around involved in the world, we need to be encouraging one another in the Lord. I'm talking up to people who are believers in Jesus Christ. This is the way we are to live. We're not to get trapped up in these things. We are to exhort one another. We are to, when we have difficulty, we shouldn't just sit around and talk about it for three or four hours. We need to share with each other what's going on in our lives and then stop and say, let's pray. Let me pray for you. Ryan, let me pray for you and bring it to the Lord in prayer. And in that way, encourage each other. And, and it says even more so as you see the day approaching. And it's also very important for you to find a good fellowship of people, whether that's a church or maybe you don't have a local church, but you can start a home group or a home Bible study within your home. It's so important to meet and fellowship with one, one another and learn how to get along because we are one in a family. Mm -hmm. So that, that would be just my application of this section for us today, that we need to be encouraging one another, not jumping on that train of being negative and um, putting people down, but to be encouragers. I love that because to th this whole idea of, of praying for your leaders mm -hmm. and doing all that, I mean, people, they don't pray for their leaders today. Well, They're I think some do, them. but more more Man. of us need to rise into that position. Yeah, we do. The Lord they, tells I us mean, to do that. Really, we're, we're all human beings. That's right. And, uh, you know, under the influence of some. And, but God said, love your enemies. He said, love your brother. And we need to yes, do that. Yes, we need, we to, need to, do to do that. We need to do that. So may God help us to learn how to love each other.